Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the multinomial theorem. The multinomial theorem states that if you look at x1 plus x2 plus xk, the sum of k real numbers to the power of n, this is the sum over all combinations of n1, n2, n3, nk. We sum over all possibilities with the only constraint that n1 plus n2 plus nk is equal to n. So we sum over this entire collection of possible values of n1 through nk with the constraint that they must add to n. And then I have the multinomial coefficient, n choose n1, n2, nk, and then x1 to the n1, xk to the nk. This is our multinomial theorem. So let's see an example of this. If we look at x plus y plus z to the fourth power, and we apply this, what we'll see is we're going to sum over, and we'll replace the n1, n2, n3. We don't need indices, we only have three of them. What I'll do is I will say over all i, j, and k, so three indices. I have n1, n2, n3. So here what I'm really doing is I'm setting, re-indexing this by saying that n1 is equal to i, n2 is equal to j, and n3 is equal to k. And the requirement then becomes that i plus j plus k is equal to 4. Of 4 i, j, k, and then we'll have an x to the i, y to the j, and then z to the power of k. And this may look intimidating, but we can sort of write down term by term and figure out how we can arrange all these in such a way that they make sense to us. And so let's think about this. So there's going to be there are lots of terms here, but what we could do for the first one, for example, we can look at the first term, and we'll do a 4, and then we'll have a 4, a 0, and a 0. And then I'll have an x to the 4, y to the 0, z to the 0 be one possible term. I could do a 4, and then a 3, and a 1, and a 0 would be another possibility. And I'd have x to the 3rd, y to the 1, z to the 0. Another term I could have in this, another possibility, is going to be 4, and then 2, 1, 1, for example. And this would be an x squared, a y to the first, a z to the first power. And let's say, I'll put a dot, dot, dot here to mean there's many other terms. And let's say that the last one corresponds to the z being equal to 4. So we'll have a 4, and then we'll have a 0, 0, 4. We'll have an x to the 0, y to the 0, z to the fourth power. And now, for example, let's figure out what some of these coefficients will be. So over here, this term, let's look at this first term over here, would be equal to, well, this would be 4 factorial over 4 factorial, 0 factorial, 0 factorial, x to the fourth. And we see that this will just be 0 factorial is 1. Those will cancel. So this whole term over here is just an x to the fourth. If we go and look at the second term over here, the second term over here, for example, will be 4 factorial over 3 factorial, 1 factorial, 0 factorial, x cubed y. And so we see what this will simplify to, put plus over here, plus over here, will be 4 factorial over 3 factorial, because the 1 factorial and 0 factorial are both 1. So this will be 4 factorial over 3 factorial, which is 4, x cubed y. If we look at this term over here, We see this will be 4 factorial over 2 factorial, 1 factorial, 1 factorial, x squared, y, z. And now the 1 factorials are just 1, 2 factorial is 2, 4 factorial is 24, so this will be, this is over here is 24, and this over here is just 2. So we're going to have a 12, x squared, y, z. And let's look at this last one by similar to the first calculation. What we're going to see over here is we're going to have a 4 factorial 
plus dot dot dot, plus four factorial over zero factorial, zero factorial, four factorial, z to the fourth power. And what I have here is that's just going to be a one, because the four factorials will cancel, and the zero factorial is equal to one. So this will be a z to the fourth power. Now, these are not the only four terms in the expansion. There are many more, right? But what we're going to have to do is figure out a way to write an exhaustive list of these and figure out that we haven't missed anything. So what we can do is we can think of all the possible pairs of i, j, and k. And the only requirement is that the sum i plus j plus k has to be equal to 4. So as we've seen before, what we can do is we can look at this pair 4, 0, 0. And then over here, we sum to 4. Then there are several options. Now the i can no longer be 4, because that if, the, if i is equal to 4, then if j and k are positive or non-zero, non-negative, they have to be 0. So if i is 3, you can have a 1 or a 0, or a 0 or a 1. 3, 0, 1. Those are the only possibilities when you have a 3 for the i. So this will be a 4 and then a 4. And you can think of the possibility when i is equal to 2. So you can have a 2, 0, 2. You can have a 2, 2, 0. Or you can have a 2, 1, 1. And those are the only possibilities when i is equal to 2. And then you can cycle through this and then systematically list all the possibilities based on the parameter i, everything that i can be equal to. And by doing this, you'll see that the different possibilities that arise will cover all the desired cases. So writing on a chart like this will help you identify each term in the multinomial expansion. Now, oftentimes, they'll ask you to find a certain value of these things. They'll say, what is the coefficient of x squared, y squared, z to the 0? And then you'd plug in i equals 2, j equals 2, k equals 0, and find the corresponding coefficient using the multinomial theorem. Thank you very much.